God has done a miracle in your life. God has rescued you oh, yeah. from darkness. God has rescued you from the blindness of sin. The Bible describes us before you move in a relationship with Jesus as being spiritually dead. Now when you think about that, how does a dead man respond? If you went to a funeral and you opened up a briefcase of a million rand, right? Or in my case, a million dollars. You opened up a briefcase filled with millions of dollars and you put it in front of the dead man. How is he going to respond? What is he going to do? Nothing. He's dead. There's no life in him. There's no response. The Bible says that in Adam, God created this man named Adam. He was the first human being. He was created. Then God, out of his room, created woman. And her name was Eve. And they were married. And God told them, told Adam, as far as you can see, you can have all of these things. Just don't touch that one tree of the knowledge of good and evil. All of this thing, all of this, as far as I can see. And the Bible says that there was this creature called the serpent. And it says that he was the most cunning creature of them all. And he came slithering through the garden with his slick self just... And he saw Eve. And what he did was this. He came to Eve and he says... You see that tree? You see that fruit? It looks good. And the Bible says that when Eve looked at the, the fruit on the tree and the knowledge of good and evil, that God says, don't touch that tree. That Eve looked at it and she saw that it was, it was pleasing to the eyes. And this serpent, this, this tricky, sneaky creature, he begins to have her question what God says. And God said that on the day that you eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. But this creature, he tells Eve, you're not going to die. Let me tell you what God is trying to say. Because sometimes God doesn't make himself clear. What God meant to say was, if you eat the fruit from this tree, then you too will be able to have the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, the serpent tricked Eve into thinking that she can determine for herself what's good and what's evil. The serpent says, basically, you don't have to wait for God to tell you what's right and what's wrong. You can tell yourself what's right and what's wrong. And then he says, you will be like God. And to this very day, each and every person in this room, apart from Christ, has been falling for the same trick. In your mind, in our minds, we think that we are our own gods. And we think we can tell ourselves what's good and what's evil. If it looks good, it must be good for me. If it tastes good, then it means I can enjoy it. If it feels good, then it must be there must be nothing wrong with this experience because it feels so right. If you think that way, you're thinking in the way that Eve thought when she was tricked, when she was deceived by Satan, God's enemy. And if you're apart from Christ, you are still in this cycle, determining for yourself what's good and what's evil. I can smoke this if I want to. I can drink this if I want to. I can watch this if I want to. It says adult. I'm over 18. They told me if I'm over 18, then I'm an adult. And if they says adult on it, and I'm an adult, then I can watch this. Mm -hmm. That's a trick. Keep talking. Then Keep talking. You define what an adult is. Don't fall for the trick of the enemy. God wants to set you free from the trap of thinking like the world does. God wants to set you free from the trap of thinking the way your own flesh tells you to think. We always say, follow your heart. Right? Follow your heart. 
If you feel like you like him and you feel like he loves you, then you guys might as well hook up. But the Bible doesn't say follow your heart. Matter of fact, the Bible says the direct opposite. The Bible says that the heart is deceitfully wicked. And then it says something else. It says, who can know it? You don't even know your own heart. You think people who are addicted to drugs when they were little kids, and somebody said, what do you want to be when you grow up? They said, I want to be a crackhead. I want to be strung out on drugs. You think they said that when they were little? No. Nobody says that, right? Jet. But it's the deceitfulness of sin. When you take one taste, one smoke, one sip, and you think, I'm okay, I'm cool, I can say no when I want to. I'm just following my heart. I'm just determining for myself what's good and what's evil. And then the person gets all the way out on the limb, and they've lost their families, they've lost their homes, they've lost their kids. Or your grades are so low in school, or you're so addicted to video games, you're so addicted to Facebook and Twitter, you're stuck, you're wasting your life, you're wasting your time. And you look back and you say, how did I get this far out? It's because you were following your heart. The thing that is deceitful and wicked that no one can know. So my encouragement to you is to trust in God who says, I want to set you free from the traps of this world. All you have to do is place your trust in what Jesus did on the cross. Confess with your mouth, the Bible says. And when you confess with your mouth, all the Bible means is this. You say the same thing about your sin that God says. God says your sin deserves punishment. Your sin is so bad and so ugly that you deserve to be in a literal place that the Bible calls hell. And when the Bible describes this literal place, this real place called hell, it describes it as a lake of fire. It describes it as a place where the worm never dies. It describes it as a place where people would cry and rather for the mountains to fall on them rather than to be in this place. Can you imagine your preference being for the mountains to crush you? Like you would prefer to be crushed by a mountain than to be in this place. Confess that with your mouth. My addiction, my sin. You may, you may say, well, I'm young. I'm, I'm only six years old. What well, the Bible says, all Adam and Eve did was what? They didn't kill anybody. They just did what? They ate a fruit. So what's the big deal? The big deal isn't how big or small your sin is. The big deal is disobedience. The big deal is not following God. And God says, if you confess with your mouth and you would believe in your heart, trust, believe, trust in what Jesus did. And you can have new life in Christ. And you can be rescued from the wrath of God that is on the way. Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, it's not going to be as a little baby in the manger. Oh, poor look at Jesus. He's going to come back as a conquering king. For real. Bible says he's coming back on a white horse with many crowns on his head. And the crowns represent his victories over his enemies. The Bible says he's going to have blood on his robe. The blood from defeating his enemies. And you don't want to be in the line with the people who are considered God's enemies. Because he won't show mercy on you. He won't show grace on you at that point. You want to seek him now. While we may be found. This is the time. This is the season for you to say, Jesus, save me. Rescue me from, from your wrath. Rescue me from hell. So that I can be with you. That's the beauty of heaven. Is that we will be with our God. With no more sin, no more death, no more suffering. So I'm going to pray. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask God to forgive you of your sin. I'm going to pray, and this is the time for you to confess, God, forgive me of whatever it is. You know what your things are. And this is the time for you to repent and to turn away from your old lifestyle and to turn to Jesus. And God's going to give you new life. He's going to make you a new creature. 
Some people say, I had a hard 